Hi everyone, it's Niall from amstradnoob.com and today we're going to take a look at this DDI-5 device from Peter Bugage, otherwise known as Zaxxon. So what is it? Um, well, basically, first things first, uh, it is a device that allows you to add a disk drive interface, or DDI, to your 464, your Amstrad CPC 464. This device is 464 only. Uh, as you can see on the top, we've got a bunch of uh, buttons, switches, and a USB port right there, and another switch. It is a very nicely 3D printed case. And we've got this blue IDE cable for a second drive. So basically you could have, you could use the DDI uh, with your USB key as drive A, for example, and plug in a real physical drive uh, using a cable here. So you could have drive A, drive B for copying disks uh, back and forth, either from a real uh, disk drive interface to your USB or vice versa. Very useful. And it, like I said, this is um, 464 only, which is a shame. It would be really great if it could work on 464 and other models, but unfortunately it's 464 only. So let's take a look at how it works, right? First of all, we need to plug it into the 464 expansion slot, which I'm doing now. Okay, so now I've connected it to the back of the 464 and I've plugged in the USB, so let's turn it on. So let's take a look at some of the features of the DDI. First of all, you've got these three buttons here, or switches, no, buttons. Those three buttons allow you to navigate through the files which are displayed here, the disks that you've mounted in your USB key, right? So basically you just copy a whole bunch of .dsk files to uh, your USB media, insert it, and these three buttons here will allow you to navigate those DSK, DSK files. It will mount each DSK and display the contents of that. So if I do a cat, we should see the contents of the mounted disk. In this case, it's Prince of Persia. There you can see it's drive A. But if, for example, let's just move this up a little bit. If, for example, um, I want to change disk, I can press the first button here uh, a couple of times and now it's changed to something called Phoenix. Let's do another cat and see what's on that disc. And as you can see, it's fairly instantaneous. And let's try something else. Here's Pack Plant. Boom, right? So as we can see, we can navigate through uh, games or discs very easily as long as the dsk files themselves are in the root of your your uh, usb media what i found is that if you have uh, any sort of subfolder structure on the usb media and you try to navigate through that using these three buttons you're going to have some fun uh, if you if you get stuck into a subfolder type of scenario so for the easiest operation, just copy all the DSK files directly to the roots of your disk and you'll be good. So let's try running something and see how quick it is. And that was fairly instantaneous, which is fantastic. So. No need to load stuff from the tape. You can still use the tape if needed. 
to do that you use the bar tape command i believe and then it will use the tape also let's look at some of these other switches here and figure out what they mean so if we start with the first three buttons there for navigating back and forth so the first one is for going forward through your 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 mounted files the second one goes back forward and select second one is goes back the third one mm, it seems to be uh, a way of exiting from subdirectories or sub uh, folders that you have on the usb but i find it tricky and i'll, I'll see can i show you exactly what i mean soon so the first three are for navigating and mounting or unmounting your dsk files then you have these two switches the first switch controls whether or not parados uh, which you can see displayed on the lcd there whether parados um, is mounted at boot time or not and parados is a disk operating system um, that was created by bitwise systems i guess uh, and it gives you additional functionality um, for uh, disk copying uh, and so forth. So if we select drive, when we have um, the Parados ROM selected, you'll see that I have this Parados menu, right? Programmed by Richard Wilson. And what you can see is it shows the drive that's selected. At the moment, we have none. Got a bunch of options at the bottom, and those options will change depending on what key you press on the uh, Amstrad. So if I press the shift key, uh, the menu system changes, as you can see there. All right. So, for example, if I press shift and L, it prompts uh, which drive. So I can select A, and it will then read the contents of the A drive, and we can see that th there is that file there, miss input but bin, dot bin. So there are a bunch of things you can do. You can change the type of um, uh, attributes on a file. You can copy, erase, uh, move, rename, whatever. It's useful for basically uh, copying stuff from one disk to another. And that is the power of the DDI in that it gives you that ability to connect up a second drive in addition to whatever drive you have mounted here. So that is a brief look at Parados. If we um, flip the switch, the first switch, we should now see that we have the regular, oh, what's going on there? Okay. Is it working? It's working. Okay. So a little glitch. Ooh, that's not good. I haven't seen that before. Maybe I've killed my misinput uh, DSK file by powering off Parados. Okay, let's turn that off and let's try flicking to another one. So let's go Mega Blasters. Let's try that. Cat. Whoa. That is weird. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try this one. Manic. Let's run it. Yeah, I don't know what was happening there. Oh, Manic Miner. Remember that? Um, It's like a Jet Set Willy clone. Is the little Jet Set Willy character up there or Manic Miner? Press enter to start. Yeah, it looks exactly like Jet Set Willy. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent there, but uh, I guess we have to be careful with Parados. It looks like it may have damaged my um, one of my mounted uh, DSK files, but that's not a problem. I could just recopy it back onto the USB and we should be good. Okay, so let's look at some of the other uh, options on the DDI. So this one here, the first switch, uh, as I say, is from, is from switching from AMSDOS, which is loaded now, 
which is the built-in Amstrad disk operating system, or Parados when you move it over to the right, which I showed you just a minute ago. The second switch right here is for flipping between drive A or drive B, and I'll, 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 ex I'll explain that now. So when the second switch is moved to the left, um, drive A, like so, is your USB uh, media. So I can do cat and we can see whatever's on there. It's Manic Miner. And as you can see, it is drive A, right? Now, if I was to do drive B, it should say, please insert media. Yeah, disk is missing. And the reason it says disk is missing is because there is no drive B, right? But I could have a drive B if I plugged in one into the X, into the uh, connector here on the side of the DDI-5. Uh, I don't have one, so I can't show you that. But what I can show you is flipping the switch. The second switch is now switched to the B position. It's called an ABBA switch. And now if I go cat, by default, it's, it thinks that it's uh, A it should be looking at. And that's why it says drive A disk missing. But this is normal, so I'll just cancel and I'll do B because we've now flipped um, the DDI-5 to think that this is B, this is A. So if I now do cat, we will see our manic minor files. There we go. And it says drive B. So that is what that button does there, or that switch. This switch is for switching from A to B, and vice versa. Uh, this switch is for switching from AMSDOS to Parados. And this final button here is for resetting your Amstrad, as you can see there, right? So um, let's see, can I show you the, the navigation of within folders? So. I named two DIRs, uh, two directories that contain subdirectories on the USB media, and I named them with DIR. Uh, I don't know if you can see that right there, but let's see. So I'm going to try and find one of those DIRs. There's Griser. Here we go, PD dir, right? That's pinball dreams. So if I do a cat in there, let's see where I'm at. Oh, I've got that problem again. And uh, we need to change it to B, B. Okay, now we do a cat and uh, we've got a disc. All right, so that is some PD media. Now, what if I press uh, this select button again? As you can see, it's showing me PD, showing me two dots, um, it will show me two dots there, uh, which, I'm, which I think means get out of that folder. But like I said, uh, if I continue pressing this one, and then maybe that one, now I'm stuck in a sort of a subfolder mess and getting out of it is, I'm not really sure how I managed to get out of it, but this is, okay, let's try this. PD dir. Now I'm out of it. Okay, so it seems that a combination of pressing the first select button and the third will get you out of a, a, a directory um, co which contains more directories. Okay, so this is the reason why I said if you're copying lots of di disk files to your USB media, just copy them to the root. It makes getting stuck in subdirs. Um, uh, it avoids that problem, all right? Because I've definitely had that problem a few times and you've just seen it. Okay, what else can I tell you about this? Oh yeah, this one, the DDI-5 comes with 512 kilobytes of RAM, which is a lot of RAM for a 464, which originally only comes with 4, uh, 64K. So how can we prove that? I'm just gonna flip it back to A. Um, there are a bunch of games and not just games, utilities that you can run that will take advantage of 128K or more. Uh, I think RoboCop is one of them, one of those games. So let's see, can we load that up and just give you an example of, okay, here I am stuck in, <laughs> stuck in another dir. Um, okay. 
Let's try to get out of there. No. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. How do we get out? There's that. Okay, now we're out of it. It's been dizzy, finally. Here's Robocop. So let's try this one. Cat. Okay, let's run Robocop. Now, if you have more than 64K, what you should hear with Robocop is speech. Digitized speech. Don't know if you can hear it, but it makes a nice little noise as if it was reading from a real disc. Now, if you're based in the UK and you want to order one of these, you're out of luck. Uh, you're going to need to find... A... Oh, there you go. I think you heard Robocop there. And that proves that this uh, extra RAM is being used by the game. So, cool. Uh, it is a very nice device. Very, very easy to load games. Uh, once you understand the limitations of navigating back and forth with these three buttons. Um, it gives you good ability to copy stuff from uh, mounted disks to an external disk drive uh, using Parados. And it means that you can load games very quickly on an Amstrad 464. The downside is it's rather costly. I think this one cost about 97 GBP or Great British Pounds, and that's a lot of money. I mean, you could buy a 464, you could buy two 464s for that price nearly. Um, however, uh, it's, it means that you don't have to use the tape uh, anymore, which is a very slow and error-prone way of loading games. So overall, it's a great device. I can recommend uh, getting one if you can. Uh, it's not my first device from Peter, Peter uh, it's my second. I actually bought this one many years ago, which I still use. This one is 6128 specific. And as you can see, it uses the same type of interface, three buttons to navigate and a USB port. Uh, plus it also has an extra power cable. This one works great, my 6128, but it's 6128 only. Um, the DDI-5 is 464 only, so you can't use it on any other model except for the 464. So it's a lot of money but it's a great product. So check out um, my review on amstradnuke.com where I'll link to some information about how you can buy it and more information about the device itself. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up uh, and subscribe and comment. Thank you. Goodbye.